going to need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but I've got to go to the World Series. So I've got to, well, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man you've ever, you've ever come across. It's like you, if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against this the door. This sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there, and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper. And you go, oh, you've broken the door down. And there I am naked. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. Like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you've just got to make it slightly more seedy. Oh, so did he, did, did he get it down? He did it, yeah, and I got to the World Service with, like, minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the world. Yeah. Did they understand? I what, think what, so. What, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service? Like, thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yeah. Because you can't it's a bit like when talking yeah. to you. Carl. Yeah, exactly, Carl. I think you're on thin ice there, <laughs> worrying about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that, because some people will say, oh, we haven't even got a telly here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Player records. Nirvana, all apologies on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pimpton. Well, Steve, I met up with. I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm, I don't know why uh, you're Let me just expl- it. explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's, it's just unfair. And if he sees us laughing, he, he clams up a little bit because he, he knows something's wrong with his head. So, um... I was in the pub and uh, Carl called and returned the call. I called you earlier, and I said, "Oh, I'm just across the road. For it. I come over," and uh, he came over, and we had a conversation. And uh, I kept saying, "No, save it." And I can't remember half the things he was saying, but I do remember one thing he said. He said that the human eye never grows. It's the he said he said unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life. He says the human eye never grows. Now there's a little bit of. He said, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a baby's never. born, everyone always goes, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's like the main feature. Yeah. They're quite big. They <laughs> don't grow, they don't get any smaller, they stay the same size. What, you mean once you become an adult, you've the same size no. eyes? as soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are as a little baby, they stay the same size. It's just like the sockets. And I said, I pointed out to him, right, you know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would look like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. (laughs) You don't want to go (laughs) lay into the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't laugh when he said that. Respect. (laughs) 